I have two M2 13 inch MacBook Pro with different memory configuration. Let's see how they perform compared to each other and also a whole bunch of M1 chips in a real world photography workflow. This is Art is Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. A big thank you to those of you who have already subscribed and if you're new, welcome. Please consider subscribing to the channel, this way I can do more tests like this in the future and grow the channel even further. This being said, there are going to be a lot of data points, so feel free to pause this video at the chart so you can analyze the result yourself in addition to my analysis that I'll be sharing with you. This said, let's jump right in and talk about the test system. Starting with the two 13-inch MacBook Pro, these are the one with the M2 chip, and for the most part, they are identical. The only variation between these two is the amount of RAM inside it. 8 gigabytes and 16 gigabytes of memory. Now with this being said, between these two machines, there are some variation that shows up almost right away when we're doing the test in certain apps. I'm going to outline those when we get to those apps as well. In addition to these two machines, we'll also be looking at the result from the M1 Ultra, M1 Max, M1 Pro in various different configuration and also the M1 inside the Mac Mini and also the base MacBook Air. Now with this being said, the M1 chip, based on my testing, extensive testing that I've done in the past, the one inside, for example, the MacBook Air, MacBook Pro 13 inch, Mac mini and also the iMac are very close and very identical to each other. So what we're going to do is use these machine, predominantly the Mac mini as a benchmark machine to compare the result and how the M2 chip is performing against the M1. And that being said, I have a 24 gigabyte machine coming down the pipeline probably in like about a week or so. So I'll be publishing another video and sharing you my thoughts whether upgrading this 13 inch MacBook Pro with the M2 chip to 24 gigabyte is worth it. It is something that you should consider or not. I can tell you right now that if you are going to really bump the machine, these ones up to 24 gigabyte, you may be better off getting a base 14 inch MacBook Pro. But I have more thoughts on this later on. Also, the new MacBook Air with the M2 chip, an entire redesign, just went on pre-order a few days ago. I have a few machines that I order that will be coming into the studio, so we'll be testing those as well. Based on what we're seeing so far with M2, I'm not sure if these machines are going to be the huge performer we are expecting from them or not, but we'll take a look once they come in. If you're looking to see the result from an Intel machine, my recommendation is to go look at my previous video because I have done extensive testing with various Intel machine with the Mac Pro, for instance, two different configuration, the 12 core and also the top of the line 28 core Mac Pro and also the 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro. So my videos and benchmark that I've done on the Mac Studio will cover all of those. So I recommend going to look at those videos. Right now, I think that we are really deep into the M1 cycle that I'm just going to focus on the Apple M chip at this point forward. Now, I will also share with you that many of the tests and the result that you're seeing in this video have been retested entirely with Mac OS 12.4 and also the latest version of program. In fact, with Lightroom Classic, you're going to find out that I have done the retest with three different version of program and they produce almost three different results. It's kind of really jarring and you're gonna find out about that in just a moment. Impression, based on my testing for these M2 ships so far, the performance is somewhat of a mixed bag. In fact, the M1 ship is performing better than the M2 ship in many of the tests that I have done, especially even with a SIP machine with 16 gigabytes of memory. So you may be wondering what's really going on here. Well, there's a few things. Number one, I think that the M2 is riding on a lot of hype that we have generated since Apple has already announced the M1. Knowing the way how the M1 performs against the Intel ship, I mean, we're talking about leaps and bounds in performance and efficiency. We're expecting the same thing to happen in the M2 ship and I don't think that's really quite the thing we're gonna get going forward, at least not in every single cycle. And with that being said, there's also another thing we have to remember, and that is the lack of optimized app. And yes, there is a difference between a native app and an optimized app. So just because an app developer made their app native to the system, it doesn't mean that it can really utilize the resources in these machines efficiently. And we can see that really clearly with the M2. I mean, for example, a program such as Lightroom Classic does not know how to utilize the processor 
the system on the ship inside the M2 efficiently and the performance is really across the board. Now, I will also say that later on this fall, we're going to get a new operating system. So there's a lot of catching up that the app developer has to do. Many app developers are just coming around to optimize their app for the M1. Some of them hasn't even, even got around that far yet. So those are things to really keep in mind. Another thing I will also share with you is the fact that generally app developers like to release new features because those are the shiny things that really sells the application more so than spending a large amount of engineering resources to optimize an application that may get a small amount of performance gain. So those are the things that they are going to weigh. However, from where I stand, I would love to get apps that are really optimized for these silicon because they can really do so much. Now let's talk about SSD speed versus size a little bit. So, so far, on the 16 gigabyte model, the result is pretty much very similar to the 8 gigabyte model with 256 gigabytes of memory. And that is, it runs on one NAND chip. So we got the speed that is really cut off in half. Now, I have received some comments on my channel saying that, well, this is really attributing to the performance because what we're seeing right now is that when the memory gets compressed and it gets swapped to the SSD, it can't read and write as fast. Well, I would say that that is a really small contribution to it. However, if you watch my other video, I'll leave a link to it up here and also in the description below. The SSD speed itself that the program are really using to read and write the data doesn't really require that much. And even if the system is going to compress those memories, write it to a swap on the SSD, most of the time these swaps are fairly small, especially when you're running with a program such as Lightroom or Lightroom Classic for that matter. And it's not like you're working with 50, 60 gigabyte files all the time in Photoshop that requires that massive amount of fast swapping. So those are just one of those things I wanna kind of point out that doesn't really quite equate itself entirely that just because the SSD is slower, we're getting slower performance. That's not really the entire picture we're seeing right now. The other thing that I also want to point out is the amount of RAM in the system really attributes to the variations in performance. And I think that a lot of this has to do with the app developers itself, that they are capping certain performance on certain machine, maybe because there is not enough to really share between the CPU, the GPU, or the program can't really utilize that well. But we're going to talk about that in just a moment. Now let's have a look at the result from Lightroom Classic. Everything has been retested using version 11.3.1, 11.4, and 11.4.1. Something to note is that in version 11.4 and upwards for Lightroom, Adobe have gone in and enabled GPU acceleration on exports, so we're going to see the export time drop significantly when we compare 11.3.1 to 11.4, and the result's going to be very similar in 11.4.1. Now, I have run all these tests on macOS 12.4, and I would definitely not recommend that you run any of these tests, especially if you're going to see the performance on any macOS beta, because the performance will drop significantly. And yes, I have run a few machines on the macOS beta. That's why I'm putting that caution out there. Let's start out with the 1000 file one-to-one -one preview. This is version 11.4, and we can start to see the anomaly happening. Now I ran these tests on the M2 machine a few times to guarantee that the result that we're seeing pretty much falls in line with each other. And interestingly enough, the eight gigabyte machine is about two minutes faster than the 16 gigabyte model. Not really sure how that's happening. However, this is the result that we're seeing so far. What this chart is telling us though, is the fact that these M2 ship per core performance is definitely much faster than the M1 ship that we're seeing the performance right there because this is using just the CPU for the rendering for preview. It's not really utilizing any GPU whatsoever. But what's really the most interesting about this is the fact that the machine with less memory is performing better than a machine with more memory. Now let's continue on with this test using three different versions of Lightroom and let's have a look at the result, which you will see even more anomaly happening. What we can see right now is that many of these anomaly revolves around the amount of RAM that is on the system. Let's start out with the M2 13 inch MacBook Pro with 16 gigabytes memory. 11.3.1, 11.4, timing, it's pretty much almost identical to each other one second apart, that's margin of error. However, when I install 11.4.1, we now have an optimization that is pretty much about a fifth faster 
down to 20 minutes of time compared to 25. That is quite a significant improvement. So that's a move in the right direction. However, when we take a look at, for instance, the result from the Mac Mini 16 gigabyte, which is the third one down in purple right there, the timing for all of these are pretty much just about the same, maybe about like a few minutes or um, a few seconds apart, but however, they are about the same. What's really interesting though, is when we take a look at the eight gigabyte machine. So the eight gigabyte one, the M2 performs the best in version 11.3.1, Something happens in 11.4 that caused that time to increase and something happens again in 11.4.1 that caused that time to increase even further. So now we're seeing that the latest version is now taking longer to run. And this result is also being repeated in the M1 MacBook Air with eight gigabytes of memory. This is the base model. We can see that the timing is also increasing on the eight gigabyte model. So for some reason, Lightroom Classic does not like a machine with eight gigabytes. So let me put it this way. If you're looking to buy a machine, you're using these computers to run any type of pro app at all, do yourself a favor, get 16 gigabytes of memory. It's going to take you a much longer way than what the eight gigabyte machine can do. All right. Here is the result compared to all the other machines. You can pause this chart and take a look at the comparison in time yourself. Obviously the M1 Ultra is performing at the very top of the heap there. And as we go to the Pro and the Max, the performance spread is about the same. These are pretty much, I would say, within a margin of error of each other within a minute or so, not that huge of difference. Then we have the M2 ship spread. Then we also have the M1 that's trailing behind. So this is pretty much falling in line with what we would expect these ships to perform and in, you know, in their respective class. Now let's have a look at the export result for these 1000 files using Lightroom Classic 11.4. Remember that in this version, Adobe have gone in and utilized both CPU and GPU for exporting tasks. A few surprising things are happening right now, and that is the Mac Mini M1 with 16 gigabytes of memory is pretty much beating out all these M2 machines. What we would have expected, or what we think we would have expected, is the fact that these M2 machines would perform better than the M1. However, we're not really quite getting that just yet. A couple of reasons why this may be happening, and that is Lightroom Classic is now optimized for the M1 system, meaning that when we're doing the export task, Lightroom Classic understands how to utilize both the CPU and GPU on the M1 ship. However, it does not necessarily understand how to utilize that on the M2 just yet. Yes, it does see the GPU, but it doesn't really know what to do with it and how to send the task to the GPU at this moment in time. So once Adobe have gone in and optimized for these M2, I believe that we're going to see a much better number when it comes to these ship. Now, the other thing that we would note about this is that going from 16 gigabyte memory to 8 gigabytes memory between these two M2 machines, we now pretty much double the amount of time. So what this is really telling us is that if you're using these computers to run any type of pro workflow or semi pro workflow using Lightroom Classic, give the machine more memory, meaning that configure the machine with at least 16, if not 24 gigabytes of memory, because that's going to take you a much longer way compared to eight gigabytes of memory. Because if you start to multitask, by the way, I'm running all these tests with just one program running and the operating system, that's it. But if you start to multitask, well, this may not perform as well as it did right now, as you're seeing the result here. So those are the things to think about. And lastly, we have the MacBook Air M1 with seven GPU, eight gigabytes of memory that takes almost about an hour. There's a few things working against this MacBook Air. Number one, it has one less GPU core. It has only eight gigabytes of memory. And also it is passive cooling, meaning that there's no active fan, unlike in these machines where it can kick on when the ships run hot. Pretty much when these run hot, the only thing that it can do is really slow down the performance. So I think that's the result what we're seeing right now with the MacBook Air. Now, this does not give us that much promising result for the M2 inside the new MacBook Air, but we're gonna be testing it out and I'll be sharing you the result for that soon. So make sure you subscribe if you haven't done so.
Now let's take a look at the Lightroom Classic export comparing three different versions of Lightroom, 11.3.1, 11.4, and 11.4.1. Remember that in these two versions, Adobe have gone in and utilized the GPU for exporting. And a few interesting things are happening with regards to the amount of RAM in the system, very similar to the preview for these 1000 files that I have shared with you earlier. Let's start with the M2 and 16 gigabytes memory. We can see that the time is now starting at 25 minutes. It have gone down in 11.4 to around 18. And for some weird reason, the timing has bumped up again in 11.4.1. So that's not really a quite promising result that we would have expected. I think that as the new version of software come out, we expect the time to constantly decrease. We're not really getting that right now, but I think this has to do a lot with optimization. However, when we look at the M2 with eight gigabytes of memory, this is pretty much the opposite. It's performing really well in 11.3.1, it really sucks in 11.4. I mean, it takes close to eight minutes longer. And when it comes to 11.4.1, the results a little bit better, but not quite as good as pretty much this base version, 11.3.1. So interesting result there. What about the Mac mini M1 with 16 gigabytes? Well, we're seeing pretty much time decrease on those. So obviously we're seeing the GPU come in to really play a role in reducing the time it takes to export and in even in the latest version, 11.4.1, unlike the M2, the timing is really decreasing, even though it's just by a little bit, it is decreasing, unlike this two result, where we're now seeing the time kind of jumps up a little bit. And lastly, when it comes to the MacBook Air M1, we're seeing the time increase throughout the board. So obviously, these machines, I can tell you right now, the eight gigabyte one, it's not going in to utilize any of the GPU resource on the system whatsoever during the export. Let's take a look at these results comparing with this with all the inner machines. Obviously the M1 Ultra is performing at the top of the heap. I mean, this time got cut in almost half compared to the test that I ran before. It is really spectacular what the M1 Ultra can do. We can see the spread throughout. And the only thing that really is kind of the anomaly in this chart right now is the fact that the M1 Mac Mini is performing better than these two M2s. I would expect these two machines to pretty much slot just right above the Mac Mini M1, but we're not getting that just yet. So hopefully in the next few versions of Lightroom, this would really get optimized and we would definitely see the results for that. All right, so this is Lightroom Classic Export 1000 files from different versions, and I would put in previous LR Classic because some of these were tested even with versions before 11.3.1. But you can see how the time really got cut in half for many of these computers. For example, M1 Ultra, I mentioned that already, but this is also being seen across the board with the M1 Max, M1 Pro, and also the M1. We can see that the numbers are really pretty much down in the chart above with 11.4 compared to the previous version of Lightroom. So a lot of improvement in that area, but we're not really getting that with the M2s as yet. You can see with the M2s, so far, I mean, the charts are pretty much shorter, but not that much shorter when it comes to these new versions of Lightroom just yet. So the one trend that I have been pointing towards with Lightroom Classic is the amount of memory between 8 and 16 gigabytes perform very differently between both the M1 and also the M2 ship. For example, take the M1 and also the M2 machine with eight gigabytes of memory. Even though, yes, I'm showing a chart from the M2 machine right now, I have been observing really closely on the M1 machine and the performance is the same. Now, the other thing I will also point out is that on the M1 machine, the SSD has double the read and write speed compared to these M2 machines and the performance on the eight gigabyte model is pretty much the same. So this really means that the SSD speed itself doesn't really have a lot to do with the way how these machines are performing with Lightroom Classic. We can see that even though this is using 11.4, 11.4.1, the GPU is barely being utilized on the system. And this is pretty much the same throughout these two versions, especially on the M1 and M2 with eight gigabyte. Now, the other thing that's really perplexing to me is the fact that these four efficiency cores are being pushed hard most of the time. And the high performance core, which is the one with the dash on the very bottom there that I just put through, are not really being utilized as much. So 
it's not really targeting the right resource for the system. And I'm not sure if this is a glitch in Lightroom Classic or it is Adobe signifying that, you know what, you should not be getting a machine with eight gigabyte or because eight gigabytes of memory is not enough memory to really be utilizing between the CPU and also the GPU in the system and it just refused to use that. I'm not 100% sure what's really going on with this at the moment. However, when we look at a machine with 16 gigabytes of memory, both in the M1 and M2, pretty much once I sent the task through, the GPU peaks at almost 100%, the utilization of it. The CPU is bouncing between the two, which is perfectly fine because what is really being utilized here are the second row, which are the high performance core on the system. And that is exactly what we want to see. This is what's going to get us the shorter time, not the other ones like I showed you in the previous chart. So a lot of very interesting things happening with Lightroom Classic. So I'll be monitoring this closely. And if there's like a new version release, or something like that, I'll probably release another video in the future that kind of covers this topic just specifically on Lightroom Classic. Now let's have a look at Lightroom Classic HDR Merge comparing pretty much just the M1 and M2 so far. The performance is in line just about with each other. I would say this is pretty much within the margin of error. Yes, M2 is the fastest right now. However, because you know it also has more memory when we compare this to the Mac Mini with 16 gigabyte, it's trailing behind by only about three seconds. And with eight gigabytes memory, we can see that it's just pretty much cascading. Comparing this to all the other machines, you can see in a chart right there, everything is pretty much, I would say, within margin of error. So we're not really seeing the performance of these ships so far independently from this task. But if you do HDR merge, you can just be assured that any of these ships that you get are going to perform really well. Now, what happens if you do a large panoramic merge? For instance, this is taking 14 Nikon DA10 file to generate a 314 megapixel DNG file. Based on this so far, we can see that yes, giving the machine more memory is of a big benefit. We can see that the time on both the M2 and the M1 with 16 gigabytes of memory, it's coming in under two minutes, whereas the machine with eight gigabytes of memory, that's half the amount of RAM, is taking pretty much, I would say more than double the time to finish the task. And yes, the M2 is finishing dead last, even behind the M1 MacBook Air. So for these two machines, I would say like the M2 16 gigabyte and also the M2 eight gigabyte, there is a lack of optimization right now. So it can't really represent the best timing it can do on the system just yet. But nonetheless, if you buy this machine now, this is going to be a good representation for the performance that you're gonna get from it today. All right, let's take a look at this compared to the rest. You can see right now that if you have the M1 Ultra, I mean, this is really down to 32 seconds. This is just really awesome. So if you work with a lot of raw files, the M1 Ultra is definitely the way to go because it has 20 CPU in the system. And because Lightroom Classic really utilizes a lot of CPU, well, obviously, that and a lot of memory in the system is really going to take you a long way for this. The other thing that we can see from this graph too is that as we start to go down in the amount of memory on the system, the less memory you have, the longer it takes because this not only uses the CPU to stitch things together, but it's also utilizing the RAM to do a lot of these computations. So depending on the task you do, this is the way how you would best go in and configure the machine for your needs. Now let's have a look at Lightroom. This is Lightroom version 5.4 running on macOS 12.4. So taking a look at the result right now, the M2 with eight gigabytes is again coming out ahead of the 16 gigabyte model. And I have run this test a few times to verify the results are the same. The M1 with 16 gigabyte is pretty much still kind of like hovering in the middle there is beating out the 16 gigabyte M2 at the moment. So a lot of very interesting an anomalous result here where we're not really quite getting the result that we're expecting. These charts are not really landing where they're supposed to. Comparing this with the rest of the program, this is the way how the spread is right now. Ultra still sits at the very top. All right, let's have a look at the result from Capture One. And with this, everything is retested with Capture One version 15.3 running on Mac OS 12.4. There are a lot of changes with Capture One. So I want to run this on the latest release version to see how it performs. And with that in mind, let's take a look at the import result. And we're seeing a couple of mixed bags again that the eight gigabyte M2 is outperforming the 16 gigabyte one by a few seconds. I would say this is within the margin of error, but it's also telling us that the amount of RAM doesn't really play as big of a role as we would like to think when it comes to Capture One import preview. So what about the M1 Mac Mini with 16 gigabytes of memory? It's pretty much trailing behind. And because Capture One, I mean, it's not necessarily the best optimized program for the M1 chip. 
at any given moment in time based on my testing so far. Just using this program, running the same version on the same operating system across different machine gives us a kind of idea for how the machine is performing. This is really showing us that the M2, yes, it is faster, but I mean, it's definitely not optimized by any means at all. And the MacBook Air M1 is taking a little bit longer because again, passive cooling on that machine and also the lack of memory. Here it is compared to the inner machine. I have pointed out this out in the previous video as well that when it comes to the M1 Ultra, because it has 20 CPU, we're really supposed to see that line cut in half compared to these that have 10 CPU, but we're not seeing that just yet. Again, optimization issue, but this gives an idea for the way how the machine performance is really spread across when it comes to Capture One. Let's take a look at the export result and some of the things are kind of interesting. Well, Capture One Export utilizes GPU heavily to perform these export tasks. And we can see that the M2 obviously is performing a lot better. However, there is very little difference in time, like maybe about 30 seconds or so when it comes to 16 and eight gigabytes of memory. So we're not really seeing as much of a performance variation between these memories as we would expect it. But the number of GPU being the same, pretty much the timing is really close to each other. So obviously the RAM does play a role a but, but not quite as much as we think it would. When it comes to the Mac Mini M1 with 16 gigabytes of memory, this takes pretty much close to an hour with the MacBook Air M1 pretty much falling behind. So obviously the GPU inside these machines are definitely much better than the one that comes inside M1 because this is showing us that yes, even though it is not optimized yet, is still reducing the export time by quite a bit. Not to mention, yes, it does have two more GPUs compared to the M1 Mac Mini, and it does have three more GPUs compared to the MacBook Air, but nonetheless, it still shows us that not only just it has more cores, the cores are much faster as well. Here's the result compared to the rest. And when it comes to Capture One, there is a point of diminishing return. And I generally say that it lies somewhere in the 24 core GPU where the 24 core GPU one is performing pretty much within a hair of the 32 inch GPU, but yet you save quite a bit of money or a few hundred bucks when you choose the 24 GPU version. And if we have that, I would say that the 24 will pretty much come somewhere in this dot right here, really close to the 32 GPU model. So. Those are just some of the things to think about if you're using a lot of Capture One. Now let's have a look at the result from Photoshop. And for this, I am using Lloyd Chamber Digital Lloyd Test. There are other tests out there. However, I've been using this test consistently and I can reference result back in time. So this tends to work really well for what I do right now. I'm using three of his benchmark tests and I'll leave link to this test and also the description to all these tests in the description of this video as well. All right, let's take a look at Photoshop speed. What we can see so far is that the performance of these are pretty much put in line. They're only a few milliseconds apart. I mean, most of them are still around like four to five second mark. So we're not really going to see that much of a variation in the performance speed at both 70 and 90% RAM. Comparing this to all the inner machines, this is pretty much the way how this spreads out so far. Feel free to pause this chart so you can analyze these results. Now what happened if we work with a medium file size that is a huge file, 15.7 gigabytes, but this gives us an idea as to the way how the machine would perform when it comes to memory, when it also comes to speed as well. When we take a look at this, we can see that the Mac mini M1 with 16 gigabytes of memory, is still pretty much beating out all the other machines in this test so far the M2 with 16 gigabytes of memory by close to around three seconds. And when it comes to like bumping up the memory to around 90%, the result is a little bit reversed. But I mean that I would say with this is within margin of error that is performing really close to each other. However, again, with less RAM on the system, not quite as fully optimized as yet. When it comes to, for example, the eight gigabyte model machine and one MacBook Air, it's a little bit faster than the M2. However, when we bump the RAM up, this is pretty much the reverse, very similar trend to what we're seeing with the M1 and M2 with 16 gigabytes of memory. This is the result comparing with the rest of the machine. So we can see that obviously giving the machine more memory for these kind of tasks, you can see right now that it's going from the most memory to the least amount of memory. And you can also see that the least amount of memory you have, the longer it takes to perform these tasks. Lastly, we're going to take a look at Photoshop Huge, which is 56 gigabyte. Many of you will say that I wouldn't even do anything that close, but believe me, occasionally I would have someone contact me saying, thank you so much for running these tests because I'm constantly working with these large files and it's good for me to see these performance. So 
You may not be one of those, but if you are, well, this assault is for you. So we can see right now that the Mac Mini M1 with 16 gigabytes is still pretty much beating the M2 with 16 gigabytes by close to two minutes, actually, by a little bit over two minutes, actually. So that's just something to to note there that I think is fairly interesting. When it comes to the eight gigabyte model, the air is beating out by a little bit, and this is already bumping the system up to 90% of RAM usage. So again, what we're seeing right now is the lack of optimization. Here it is comparing to the rest of the machine. And I would say that interestingly enough, if you look at this result, the numbers are gonna be the same with the previous tests I've done in the other videos, but the M1 Max with 10 CPU, 32 GPU, 64 gigabytes of memory is beating up the M1 Ultra with 20 CPU so far in this test by, I would say like a good seven seconds. So a lot of interesting result in this chart there, but you can take a look at that. Now let's have a look at the result from Final Cut Pro export. Remember that during the keynote, Apple mentioned explicitly that they have built in an encoder decoder engine inside these M2 chip. So let's see how it performs against the M1. Looking at this so far, it's pretty much within a few seconds of each other that I would say that this is mostly within the margin of error. So the performance is pretty much about the same. So if you export video in H.264, don't expect to see a huge performance when it comes to the M2 chip, regardless of the amount of memory in the system. When it comes to this compared to the other Mac lineup, obviously when it comes to the M1 Macs, the time being cut in half compared to the M1 Pro makes sense because that M1 Max have doubled the encoder decoder engine compared to the Pro. But this is also something that's not necessarily being reflected in the M1 Ultra that has pretty much the double the encoder decoder engine compared to the M1 Max. We're really supposed to see this chart be somewhere over here where my dash is, but we're not really getting that quite just yet. And based on the way how Apple has been building up the encoder decoder ship inside these machine, I would expect these M2s to perform closer to the 16 inch M1 Pro or just the M1 Pro ship in general, but we're not really seeing that type of performance just yet. In fact, it is trailing behind, not very much, but yes, it is still trailing behind. So let's have a look at HEVC 8-bit. Timing between all these are within margin of error each other, but it's also telling you that the timing is pretty much improve maybe by a little bit, but it's only a few seconds as not really a big deal at all. Comparing this with the rest of the machine, again, the results very similar to what we're seeing earlier. However, this is pretty much somewhat what I would have expected to see with H.264, where the performance of the M2 is pretty much really close to the M1 Pro. Obviously, the M1 does trail behind a little bit, and all of these five machines, if you take a look at the result, they're only a few seconds from each other. It's not that one of them is taking about a minute longer or anything like that at all. So don't expect much by ways of HEVC export performance. What about 4S Pro 2.2? Well, when it comes to this, a couple of things happen. Uh, we're seeing the performance increase, especially when we compare to the M1 with 16 gigabytes of memory, and we start to trail with the machine with eight gigabytes of memory falling behind there. So M2, M1, M2, and then another M1 MacBook Air, obviously. Here's the result for the export time comparing with the other rest of the machine. So if your workflow predominantly revolves around encoding, decoding ProRes 422, these are definitely in a machine that will perform. However, again, it's not really quite performing in the range that we would have expect from, for example, the 16 inch M1 Pro or just the M1 Pro ship in general. You can see that it's still trail behind a little bit. So if you want more performance, again, I would probably say go for the base 14 inch MacBook Pro and you're probably going to get to see a much better performance out of these encoding decoding tasks compared to what you can get from these machines. So a few more things I'd like to share is that based on the delivery estimates so far, the base M2 MacBook Air and the 24 gigabyte M2 MacBook Pro should be coming in right at about the same time. As soon as I get them in, I'll be running them through a gauntlet of tests and share the result with you. So make sure you subscribe and hit on the bell for that. Now, based on what I've been doing so far, we now start to get a sense of how the M2 ship is performing with different memory configuration, eight and 16 gigabyte. It's starting to give us a picture as far as how these ships are really performing and how the apps are really utilizing them. So this comes down to asking yourself a very important question. Do you want to get these M2 ship because it represents the latest from Apple, but may not necessarily be the greatest for all the apps yet, especially if you are a pro? And especially if you are a pro, do you need to hit the ground running on day one? Because if you do, 
you may be better off just getting the M1 chip for the time being in any of those varieties that's going to perform much better than what these M2 can do at the moment. And you're not going to have to worry about these mix backs in performance where you're not really getting the max performance that you can get out of these machines and these chips just yet. For instance, a couple of food for thought would be if I configure these M2 MacBook Pro 13 inch with a very similar configuration to, for example, the base 14 inch MacBook Pro, you can see that the price is pretty much within striking distance, only $300 difference. You pay that extra $300, you get a better screen that is a mini LED, you get the MagSafe charging, you get a much better battery capacity, you get a much more robust encoder decoder engine, much better fan, much better thermal. So I would say that if you are going to upgrade this machine in any capacity at all, I would look at the base 14 inch MacBook Pro. Now the other thing that I would also recommend that you do is that you can look for the M1 13 inch MacBook Pro at some outlet, for example, Best Buy, for instance, that may have those machines or Costco and look into getting those machines instead, especially now that they may be clearing out the inventory or look at it used online because obviously some of these machines are not really that old at all. Someone may have just purchased it, want to upgrade. Well, this is now the time to get these M1 13 inch MacBook Pro at pretty much a really good price. The other thing I want to give us as a food for thought as well is that if we end up customizing the MacBook Air, for instance, let's say we gone in with the 24 gigabyte unified memory, 512 gigabytes of SSD storage. What we can see right now is the price is pretty much within about $100 difference between the base 14 inch MacBook Pro compared to the MacBook Air. Granted, yes, I have upgraded the memory all the way and it has slightly more memory than the MacBook Pro, but you have to remember that this machine, the MacBook Air, have passive cooling. So we're gonna be testing this machine fairly soon, but let me put it this way. Again, if you're gonna upgrade these M2 ship, the 13 inch MacBook Pro, the MacBook Air one, quite as much as what I'm showing you now, you may be better off just getting the 14 inch MacBook Pro. So that's just something to think about there. All right, one more thing I wanna share with you as you're seeing in the result, and I already shared this for you, is that the SSD speed does not really make too big of a difference at all between the M1 and also the M2 ship with regards to performance. You know, we tend to conflate these things that because the SSD is running at half the speed is really affecting the performance, it's really not affecting the performance quite as much as we think it does. What we're really seeing more so, especially with Lightroom Classic, is the amount of RAM in the system. Having eight gigabytes of RAM, Lightroom Classic become paralyzed and it can't really use the GPU for export anymore along with the CPU. When you have 16 gigabytes of memory, it can go in and utilize that just fine. This may be a signal that if you're using the machine in any pro capacity, running any of these pro apps, you may want to consider upgrading to 16 gigabytes of memory or more. And lastly, we already talked about this, hitting the ground running on day one. And if you ask me if this was worth upgrade, I would say hold off on the M2 for now. I don't think it's necessarily a machine that is worthy of upgrade coming from the M1 just yet. Until the software become optimized, these machines are literally not going to perform that much better than what the M1 can do at the moment. And it's going to be a mixed bag. So anyway, I hope you find this video helpful. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Give us a like, subscribe and hit on the bell if you're new. And in our retrust.